I'll tell you what to do. Go that way, really fast. If something gets in your way, turn. Greetings, Moto guys and Moto gals, and welcome back to the 333. Whip out your Coke bottle glasses and your pocket protectors, boys and girls, because in this post, we're going to take a closer look at the magical, beautiful science behind steering a motorcycle. Science. I can ride my bike with no handle. Steering. It started out as a pretty simple concept when we were kids. Turn the handlebars left, go left. Turn them right, go right. But we grew up and started traveling the roads on our fast fuel injected two wheel death machines. The simple rules of control we learned as kids got turned upside down, dramatically, as if influenced by some force of dark magic. Well that dark magic has a name, it's called physics, and it makes moto nerds like me giddy with delight. So before we dive any deeper into this topic, I'm issuing the standard 333 disclaimer. Take off your hat. Now raise your right hand. Now place your left hand here. Take off your hat. I'm not a scientist, not even a bro scientist. The information I'm presenting and sharing here is just what I've accumulated based on my own interest, experience, and research. You should always do your own research when it comes to learning advanced riding concepts, and taking a formal riding course is always the best way to start. So the concept we're talking about here is one that most of us are familiar with and one that still occasionally stokes up some debate in the motosphere. We're talking about counter steer. At its most fundamental level, it's a riding safety technique that many of us learned in our BRC1 course. It can be remembered and applied very easily by reciting this simple axiom. Push right, go right. Push left, go left. But as I researched this interesting, beautiful contradiction of motion, I discovered that there's a lot more to it than first meets the eye. Entire courses at MIT are taught on the multiple underlying laws of physics that support why it happens in reality. I also discovered that there's actually still some skepticism and debate in the motor community about whether it's even a real thing. I guess that's why I thought this would be an interesting post. Not to lecture or debate more experienced riders than myself but to take a new rider's view of the physics of counter-steering and the commonly accepted beliefs and misconceptions out there about what works and what doesn't. As always, I invite you to express your opinions and first-hand experiences in the comment section. So, what would you little maniacs like to do first? The science at the heart of counter-steering is complex. So complex that at times, I felt like I was peeling an onion trying to understand it. I'm not sure that I got it right, so I put links to all the resources I used, and if you feel inclined to deep dive into the physics, I encourage you to watch them. And by all means, correct me wherever I'm wrong. As best as I can understand it, counter steering works as the result of the following forces working with and against each other to create its illogical ballet. Centripetal force, torque, gravity, gyroscopic effect, and angular momentum. Basically, the position of our tires on the road surface, the contact patch, creates centripetal forces that try to push our mass in one direction or another. By intentionally pushing on our bars, we can shift the contact patch and make this centripetal force to create torque. The laws of gyroscopic effect and angular momentum dictate that when a spinning gyroscope is subjected to a torque, it leans, or processes, into the direction of the torque aided by gravity. And as best as I can decipher, this is the scientific version of push right, go right, push left, go left. I don't know about you, but after about 20 minutes of physics, I start to feel the fog of confusion surrounding my head. And I certainly don't want you guys clicking out of this video from sheer boredom or frustration. For me, a picture is worth a thousand words. So I decided to take advantage of my new dorky helmet cam and explore counter steering firsthand out on the road. Let's take a look and see what I found. Push right, go right. All right, so we have a little bit of an empty lot here that we can work in. So we are going at five miles an hour here. 
and I'm using the idle power of the engine. I'm not giving it any any throttle whatsoever. I'm just cruising through the parking lot. I'm actually at four miles an hour. Now, at this speed, the this is where the, the contradiction to counter steering comes into play. When you're going at this speed, your bike, your motorcycle, works like your big wheel did when you were a kid. So if I want to go to those trees, I turn the wheel right and I go to those trees, right? If I want to go left towards those cars, I turn the wheel left and I go to those cars. All right, so now let's do it with a little bit of speed. So we're going to try and this, this parking lot's a little small. So I'll try to get up to, you really want to get up to about maybe like 15 miles an hour. That's where you can really feel the counter steer kick in. All right. So I'll try to get up to 15 miles an hour and I want to try and do like a little bit of a right hand turn here. And I'll do it with counter steering, right? So I'm at 14, now I want to go right. See that I'm pushing to the right. Pushing to the right. I'm pushing that way. Now I want to do a sharp left hand turn. So I'm going to push left and I'm going to go left. The more you push, the more the bike will lean over. It's just a really cool thing. I mean, it works every time. If I want to make a sharp left turn turn, I push left and I go left. The more I push, the more I push out, the more I push my wheel that way, the further I lean over. And then what happens is the wheel corrects itself, you know, due to those gyroscopic forces and the rotation of the wheel, it corrects itself and it goes along the path of the curve. 11 minutes later. So this is the Kettle Run Road. So we're gonna try and do a little demo if we can here. We're going, we're going slow. There's a, uh, looks like there's a landscaping truck up there. But you can see the, the turns are marked off. We're going about 40, 42 miles an hour. So you can see, this is a pretty, I mean, it's an okay left turn, but I am pushing left. Push left, go left. Keep the speed on steady. Now I've got a right, this is sort of a chicane. Now I'm pushing into the right. Not a bad turn, kind of easy. You want to keep the throttle steady. I mean, there's other things that go along with counter steering. But as a new rider, kind of what I do is I actually kind of say this when I go into turns. I'm like right turn, slowing down a little bit, push right, go right. And the bike just straightens itself out. It's all physics and it's beautiful and it's magical and it's awesome. And if you understand it, it always works. And that's the thing that jazzes me about motorcycle riding, is there's a real science to it. You know, um, you know, you can say things like, ah, I just use my body English, I just throw some body into it or whatever, but there's science to it. You're counter steering, man, no matter how you're turning, like this dude's counter steering. All right, push left, go left. You know, this is kind of a slight turn, not very hard. This one's a little sharper. Again, we're, we're kind of slow in traffic. I, I normally wouldn't zip around here too fast because if you, if you watch my videos, this is actually where I got myself in trouble at, right? So this guy's turning on the turn. <laughs> so now I'm pushing right. The more I push, the more I lean. So there you have it. A new rider's attempt to explain the beautiful complexity of counter steer. If you're a brand new to riding, hopefully this helped you. And if you're a seasoned veteran, Maybe it gave you a different perspective on something you don't really pay much attention to anymore. Either way, thanks for visiting my channel and remember, push right, go right, push left, go left. Amazingly, I'm closing in on the 100 subscriber mark and I want to give a big thanks to all the cool regulars who I've gotten to know better over the last couple of months. In addition to the Ram Mount giveaway at the 100 subscriber mark, I'm sweetening the pot so that two subscribers will win a prize. I'm going to give away a pair of Built Trophy Short Cuff Track Style Gloves. These are men's size extra large, they run a little bit small, and they're about a $50 retail value. So if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button for your chance to win one of the two prizes when I reach the 100 subscriber mark. 